Angela Stizza, back again, <laughs> Senior Director of Rakuten. Thank you. Let's hope your slides are next. Yeah, we'll see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Just go we're more. on the right track. Yeah. All right. So, hello, everybody. Um, quick overview of Rakuten. So, Rakuten has over 70 businesses worldwide spanning e-commerce, digital content, advertising technology, and fintech. And we actually reach over a billion consumers across our ecosystem. Um, one thing we're really proud of is we're proud to be among Forbes' most innovative companies in the world. And then kind of a shameless plug, we're also very proud to have some of the most exciting and biggest uh, sports partnerships in professional sports with FC Barcelona, the Golden State Warriors, and most recently Spartan. So what I'm getting at with those shameless plugs is really that we have loads and loads of very diverse data and an equally diverse set of employees looking to access and visualize that data. So I'll take you kind of really quick high level through what our Domo journey has looked like. We have had Domo for quite some time, so you'll kind of see some of our peaks and valleys in our journey. So I bet similar to most of you, um, our Domo journey started out with manual data reporting. So we got Domo, we automated our data, everyone loved it, and then it very quickly turned into Cowboy Town and usage pretty much flatlined about as quickly as it rose. So that's kind of where I came in, and one of the first things that I did was just simply put some governance in place. And then slowly, brick by brick, leader by leader, we've been able to build adoption back up across the company to where now we're using it company-wide across every department and also across all org levels. So as I mentioned, we were an early user of Domo, so I thought for today's session it might be useful since we have had some kind of peaks and valleys in our journey. I thought it might be useful to walk you guys through high level how we approached this sort of re-emergence of our adoption, at least the things that worked, um, that might help to kind of inspire you guys as maybe you're on the same path. So the first thing I want to talk about is just adoption. So there were really three things that made all the difference for us in building that adoption back up in our company. The first was that we organized ourselves into kind of this major domo hub and spoke model. So we had a few centralized leaders in the middle, and then we had a key point person in each area of the business that was really close to the data, but also had the business context. So we had someone who specialized in HR, someone in sales, someone in finance, et cetera. And they also already had the buy-in with their teams because they were part of those teams. The second thing that we did is that we started with leaders. So we kind of took a tops down approach to adoption. And the reason for that being is everyone wants to see what their boss is looking at. And then the third thing that we did, because obviously getting adoption with leaders is only as good as the leaders that you have bought into it. So the third thing we did is we just really showed off with a mobile app. Because when you're in a meeting and you're meeting with leaders, and you're able to go to a really specific metric about a specific client on a specific date, leaders literally go absolutely bananas for that and they want that in their back pocket as well. And so we kind of use that approach to sort of seduce them into wanting to use it and kind of investing the time to learn it. So the next area that I wanna talk about is kind of connecting the use cases between those high level leadership KPIs and then the everyday business users. So on the leadership front, the two things that made all the world of difference for us in not only getting adoption back up, but also keeping people and keeping those leaders logged in, because so I actually think that's the hardest part. People get excited about it, but then they kind of trickle off, right? So the two things that really worked for us was, and they're actually pretty simple, was one, introducing color standards, and then leveraging multiple line summary numbers and cramming as much info into those summary numbers as you possibly can fit. And the reason that was so impactful for our leaders is because with the color standards, they're not having to relearn how to read a slide. In fact, they actually rarely even click on the various cards. Um, they, because of the colors, they can quickly see kind of how they're pacing. And then with the multiple summary numbers, one, they don't have to do math, but also putting multiple numbers in there helps give them that kind of comparison and context that starts to really play to that storytelling of what's actually going on. So if you just give me a revenue number, and you say, okay, your revenue is a million dollars. I don't know if I should be excited or scared by that number, because I don't know how does it compare to last year, how does it compare to my goal? So that's really um, what we tried to give to the leaders. Now on the flip side of that, with kind of your everyday business user, 
Let's take account managers as a great example, because that's probably what we all universally have in common here. Um, so for account managers, for instance, they need to see their portfolio level, but they also need to be able to drill down to specific clients, maybe to prep for a status call, and they also need to be able to drill up to say, I need to compare myself to maybe my region or my overall team. And we solved for that, again, pretty simple. We just really leverage page and card filters. So for all of our account managers, all of their pages and cards are filtered to their portfolio, and then they have the filters to drop down to the client level, and then we also have the filter, it's just kind of unselected um, for them to look up at their region, um, their product, their team, et cetera. Okay, so last area that I wanted to kind of touch on is using Domo for both business planning as well as for measuring results. So I imagine most of you guys have like measuring results piece down pretty solid, so I won't give you tips there. But I wanted to give you a couple of examples of how I've brought business planning into the mix. So if you look at the first couple of cards, leaders are very quickly able to look at that card and say, okay, I can see I started off the year really, really strong. I was outperforming last year. I was hitting my budget numbers. But the last couple of months, I've been trailing behind. And you can, and hopefully it's showing up well enough for you guys, but you can kind of see that gray area um, between the budget line. And then if they look forward in their forecast, they can also see in that blue, that gray bar is continuing to grow. And then if they drill down a level further, they can see, okay, that's actually just driven by my biggest channel, A. So that's where I need to focus. And with those two cards, leaders are able to not only measure their results and kind of go backward looking, but they're also able to go on the offense to figure out how to reverse that trend. So another example that I wanted to show you is the bubble chart on the slide. And Side note, I actually find bubble charts to be one of the most underrated cards in Domo, in my personal opinion. Um, but So I took on a new role at Rakuten last year to lead strategy and operations for our global publisher group, which includes 150,000 publisher clients. So I'll repeat that, 150,000 publisher clients. So when I'm trying to figure out the strategy for that role, how the heck do I take a bite out of that in order to move the needle? How do I break that into a smaller piece? And I actually formulated our entire strategy or kind of kicked off our entire strategy with a bubble chart that looked very similar to this. And I did it by taking, with our publishers, I rated them on, based on their audience size or their website traffic. And I plotted that against the number of advertiser partners that they have. So if I had, you can kind of see in that bottom quadrant that I'm highlighting, I then focused in on those publishers who had really high traffic or really big audience, and then very small amount of advertiser partners. And you focus in on there, and what's the call to action? Let's up those partnerships, because the audience is already there. Um, so anyway, I know this was kind of a quick overview, but hopefully um, it sort of serves to inspire you guys in your approach um, as you kind of go through your peaks and valleys of your demo journey. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.